The term fertile crescent conjures up the image of a lush, resource-rich landscape where the first farming settlements appeared in the Neolithic. It's this rich landscape that brought about one of the most successful stories of early urbanization, ancient Sumer. However, the exact mechanisms that led to the emergence of Sumer as a powerful network of city-states have never been adequately explained. It's known that water and agricultural surplus had to have played a vital role, but before the introduction of proper irrigation systems, just how was this achieved? A new paper published in the journal PLOS One discusses the topography and paleoenvironment of ancient Mesopotamia and suggests that water played a slightly different role than has been understood up until now. During the Ubayid period, from 6000 to 4000 BCE, the first settlements appeared on the Mesopotamian plain. These were small, scattered villages reliant on agriculture, animal husbandry, fishing and hunting. Some craft specialization appeared at that time, and there is archaeobotanical evidence for localized irrigation. Towards the end of the Ubayid period, culturally similar settlements to those on the plain in southern Mesopotamia appeared in the north, as well as the area of modern-day western Iran. Settlements grew, the first public temples appeared, and evidence shows that there was increased social stratification. At that time, one of the largest settlements was Eridu, which was referred to as one of the five antediluvian cities in later mythology, when the Sumerian king list was compiled. Between 4000 and 3200 BCE, the Ubayid culture was transformed as the region entered what we now refer to as the Uruk period. The population increased, people began to specialise in occupations, technological innovation took place, and society became more complex. This eventually led to urbanisation and the emergence of a network of early city-states forming ancient Sumer. It's long been thought that an abundance of agricultural surplus was the driving force behind these changes. Ancient Sumer was situated between the Arabian and Iranian deserts and had an arid tropical climate that was counterbalanced by fresh water from the Euphrates and Tigris rivers. Obviously, without harnessing those waters, settlements would have not been able to sustain themselves. However, flood recession irrigation, as it was used in ancient Egypt and the Indus Valley, could not be relied upon for Mesopotamian crops because the flood seasons and agricultural cycles did not match. Only large-scale complex irrigation systems could have exploited the rivers fully for agriculture in this way, and there's no written evidence of that until around 4,500 years ago. So during the Uruk period, how was irrigation managed successfully? In this latest study, the researchers built up a digital elevation model of the Mesopotamian plain, being careful to avoid any natural or anthropogenic changes to the landscape that had taken place post-Sumer. They then analysed a sedimentary core taken at a depth of 25 metres from Lagash in 2022. To interpret the paleoenvironment data, the team used information from previous publications on boreholes. In the study, the researchers identified fluvial, deltaic and tidal deposits. Fluvial means deposits related to the actions of a river. Deltaic refers to the triangular pieces of low-lying land called deltas, where a river splits into smaller tributaries before flowing into the sea. And tidal means those deposits related to the actions of the sea. They also examined the core to look for marine organic matter, microfossils, foraminifera and ostracods. Foraminifera are single-celled planktonic animals that indicate the presence of seawater. Ostracods are minute aquatic crustaceans and are found in standing water. Radiocarbon dating was carried out on in situ plant remains and marine shells. The sediment that makes up the plain of Lower Mesopotamia, where ancient Sumer flourished, mostly comes from the Tigris-Euphrates river system, with its headwaters in the Taurus Mountains. However, sediment also comes from short rivers drained from the Sagros Mountains and streams on the Arabian Plateau that appear during heavy rains. 
This sediment is deposited across the plain as the rivers emerge from their valleys. During the last glacial maximum in the Pleistocene, when sea levels were around 120 meters lower than today, the rivers extended into the Persian Gulf, which was a fluvial deltaic landscape similar to the modern Mesopotamian plain. Sea levels then rose during the Holocene and peaked in the Persian Gulf between 7,000 and 6,000 years ago. The study revealed that during this high stand, the Persian Gulf not only filled with water, but it also extended further north than it does today. This meant that its tidal flows brought fresh water into the Euphrates and Tigris valleys. An extensive tidal freshwater zone likely developed around the Sumer Delta lobe and was formed by both the Euphrates and the Tigris. The sediment was enough to keep up with sea level rise, preventing a marine transgression as far north as Uruk. Tidal freshwater would have been extremely useful for agriculture because it is steady and not destructive. So the evolution of ancient Sumer coincided with the flooding of the Gulf, bringing about accessible fresh water in its surrounding valleys at times necessary for agriculture. This suggests that the region's urbanization was connected to the easy exploitation of tidal freshwater, something that did not require complex irrigation systems. However, towards the end of the Uruk period, this tidal coast at the head of the Persian Gulf eventually became blocked by deltaic infill, cutting off the freshwater the Sumerians relied upon. This coincides with the introduction of large-scale irrigation systems when the exploitation of the rivers and their flood cycles for agriculture became their only option. These systems appear in cuneiform texts, but tides do not. So this conforms with the chronology since tidal freshwater was relied upon early in Uruk's evolution, whereas writing appeared towards the end of the period when evidence shows the gulf head had become blocked. However, the authors of the paper do suggest that ancient Sumer's reliance on tidal freshwater may be commemorated in their later myths. For example, the Sumerian god of water, Enki, separates sweet from bitter waters, which might refer to the tidal circulation of freshwater and salt water. At Eridu, its temple was known as the House of the Deep Waters, using the word Abzu, which usually referred to a spring. The Abzu was important in cosmology, since it wasn't simply the name for a spring, but was the primordial origin of all fresh water, such as springs, rivers, fountains, and the rain. But since there are no springs near Eridu, which is located in a natural geological depression, Perhaps the name of the temple includes the word Absu because it actually refers to the rising and falling tides that would have been observable in the hollow where the town was built. Even more intriguing is the fragmented flood story written in Sumerian known as the Eridu Genesis, the earliest version of the flood myth that also appears in Akkadian in the Epic of Gilgamesh. Could this story have been based on real events due to the changing coastal landscape of ancient Sumer? Perhaps the blockage of the head of the Persian Gulf caused the annual flooding of the Euphrates and Tigris to be bigger and to last longer, something that was then memorialized in later stories. Further research will help to reconstruct the paleogeography and paleohydrology of the region and see how this related to what we know about the Sumerian economy, society and culture. Newly deciphered cuneiform texts will also be useful in this context. The paper goes into a lot more detail on the methods used and how the results have been interpreted. So if you want to find out more, it's open access and I've put the details in the description below. That's it. Let me know what you think about ancient Mesopotamia in the comments. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.